Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to attack kind of a different topic, but the top five strength athletes in the last 20 years based on my opinion. So here we go. Now, these particular top five are not in any particular order, but I think they need to be mentioned, and they would be in someone's at least top five as well. Obviously, we can't touch everyone, but I'm going to give you the guys that touch me the most as far as training hard, intensity, longevity, and titles won, I think are some major key points. So the first one that comes to mind is Marius Pujanowski. Now, Marius Pujanowski was born in 1977, so he's still fairly young, and he dominated Strongest Man, winning the World Strongest Man title five times, which is still the undisputed record of how many times won. Now, if you look through his titles, it is unbelievable. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. If you look at Strongman Super Series, he placed first in the Strongman Super Series. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 times. Just unbelievable, right? Now you go to Europe's Strongest Man, he was first one, two, three, four, five, six times world's, world's strongest team, three times. Polish Strongest Man, seven times. It's just unbelievable. Now what's impressive about Pujanowski is not only did he have these many titles, which you can look up yourself, he actually was aesthetically badass. The dude's waist was small, his abs were shredded, his, I mean, he looked like a bodybuilder, and really, popularity of the World's Strongest Man was kind of faltering in the 90s, and when Pujanowski hit, because of his aesthetics, he took World's Strongest Man and pushed it to the next level, as far as my opinion is concerned. So you have to give Pujanowski some big credit in the last 20 years for making World's Strongest Man as popular as it is today. Now, he switched over to MMA and has a decent career doing that. He's just well-rounded. So you got to give Pujanowski at least in the top five. The next one that we got to put on the list is Lasha Talakazi. Now, Lasha Talakazi was born in 1993, so he's super young still. He was born in Georgia. Now, Georgia is a country right in between Turkey and Russia, so it's kind of the old Russian area of the north. Now, this Olympic weightlifter just broke Alexiev's all-time world record in the clean and jerk. It's insanely impressive. Now, I know the super heavyweight guys were kind of switching gears from Marius Pujanowski being just jacked to the gills. Some of these dudes don't look like they lift weights, but think about this perspective. He broke Alexiev's world record that was set back in like 1976. So in my opinion, now Razadeh was right in between there, but you look at that clean and jerk, that is one of the most impressive things in sports history ever done. It was done just recently. That guy Lasha has just got power beyond belief. So I give Olympic weightlifting a big credit and Lasha is one of those dudes that has just done something that seemed humanly impossible. Um, so I really, really am impressed by a lot of Olympic weightlifters, especially that guy. Now the next might be a little biased because I personally know him and I've seen him train, but Julius Maddox has to be mentioned. When you take the world record from the 730s to the 770s, which the record's only been moving about five pounds every five to eight years, and you jump at nearly 50 pounds with 800 being close, you gotta mention Julius Maddox. His bar speed and upper body strength in the bench press is something that I've never seen before. Not in any competition, not in human existence, right? So as far as bench pressing is concerned, he's the most impressive specimen to ever walk the planet, regardless of generation. Yeah, I mean, look at some of these videos while I'm talking, they're just unbelievable bench power. Everything he does is technically really good. Um, and at six foot three, 450 plus pounds, he's just a fucking giant. So Julius Maddox gets number three. And like I said, these one to five are not in any particular order, but Julius Maddox is a monster. Now, he's from pretty close to where I grew up. He's from Kentucky, Northern Kentucky, almost Indiana. He's about three hours from where I grew up. Um, he's been a Midwest boy his whole life. He's went through a lot of different issues. You know, he's been uh, in jail, had a lot of problems, cleaned himself up, and now is doing a lot of good for a lot of people. So Julius Maddox is number three. Okay, number four. Now we're getting really hard to pick. So now we got to pick based on just freak freak of nature. So now we're going to go to Hathor Bjorgason. 
Now, Athor Bjorgerson was born in 1988 from Iceland, but the reason he's picked is he was the only man to ever win Europe's Strongest Man, the Arnold Classic, and World's Strongest Man in the same year. Now, at six foot eight, six foot eight and a half, 450 pounds, this dude was a monster. Now, remember that he was doing all this crazy stuff playing the mountain in Game of Thrones, meaning that in his 20s and early 30s, he was filming and having to do all this other stuff. He wasn't just sitting at home training. He was having to be on TV. So think about being at that level and that caliber and having all these other responsibilities. What I like about Half Thor is, is that for as big and as tall and as brawny as he is, he's insanely flexible. And what I like about him too is that he built a massive conditioning base before he got super strong playing a lot of basketball and things of that nature. So he's a big multi-sport style athlete. Now that he's kind of gotten away from strongman and kind of going into boxing and other types of things, you have to give him credit where credit is due. And at six foot eight, 450 plus pounds and winning those three titles in the same year, that is a complete insanity. All right, I'm gonna give some love to the lighter guys. Now there is a dude that I'm gonna take as a blast from the past, it's Alexander Kutcher. Now Alexander Kutcher was, I believe, a 165 pound guy. I don't know a ton about him, and when I looked him up, he even made me have more respect for the guy. Alexander Kutcher was a 165 lifter in the WPO. I watched him pull somewhere around 800 or very close to 800 at 165, and all of his other lifts were impressive as hell. His lower back looked like three inch PVC pipes very insane. So if you look up Alexander Kutcher, he has close to 25 or more international and national titles. His first meet being in 1997, and it looks like he just did another meet over in the Ukraine in 2019. So we're talking about a 20 something year career. And if you look down his list, it's multiple first places. Now what's even more impressive is that he lifted in the IPF for many years, which we all know is a very Incredible, but very difficult federation. He broke tons of records in the WPC, the GPA. Um, I mean, if you look through it, he wasn't just a one trick pony in one federation where he was well liked. He lifted everywhere. He was probably one of the most impressive lightweights I've ever seen. And maybe it's just because I was impressionable, impressionable when I was younger at that particular time around 23 to 25. And I couldn't believe the weights that he was lifting, but look up Alexander Kutcher and you're gonna freak out. That dude is an animal. I remember him showing up at the WPO and just doing lifts that were just out of control. So that's my top five, right? We got an Olympic lifter, we got some strong men, we got some power lifting. Um, I mean, just guys are just all over the board. So I hope you guys like this and maybe heard of some person that you never heard of before. Um, go check those guys out. And like I said, if you see them around, give them respect, man. Those dudes are freaks.